Hey boys, welcome back to some more NRL Supercoach. It's going to be the round 10 team list discussion. There should be there should be some pretty hefty inclusions for a few teams this week. So uh let's go straight into it. Also, I'll give my tips for the for the round. I think I went pretty shocking last week with my tips. I think I only got like four out of eight. Um I mean there was I mean not so much like the massive upsets, but uh, a lot of the sort of favorites, or I guess like half of the favorites ended up losing. Um, but first off, we have the Dolphins v. the Seagulls. So big inclusion. Tessie New is gone, thankfully, and uh, our boy Herbie Farnworth is back, which is sensational. Um, I'm obviously still very upset he left the Broncos, but it's just great to see Herbie in action. And he will, I mean, he'll be huge for the Dolphins team. I mean, defensively, he's very underrated, really strong defensive center. And obviously, he's got all the attacking upside in the game. Um, I know people, people will say that he will hinder Jermaine Asako. I sure as hell hope so, <laughs> because, and I'm assuming he'll go to that side. Obviously, earlier in the season, he was on Azarko's edge, um, and I, th I think he'll he'll stay on that side with Azarko, you would assume. Um, but yeah, as someone who didn't pick up Azarko last week, when I... When I could have, when I could have, but I didn't. Um, I'm, I'm hoping. I do think that the talk that uh, that Herbie doesn't pass the ball is a little over overstated. Like, yes, he doesn't, but there's plenty of centers that don't pass. But they, they only need to throw a couple of really good passes to score a try or two for the winger. That they, they don't, they don't need to pass every ball to their winger. So, I, people, people are overstating the the glue hands of Herbie. He's definitely not as bad as someone like a an Isaac Tungo, even a Joey Manu at times. I mean, Manu can. I mean, Manu. I, I relate Manu to very similar to Herbie. I think they're both very similar type players. And Dom Young, outside of Manu, doesn't see too much footy, but he just gets a couple of good balls away and scores a couple of tries. That's, that's all you need. So I wouldn't be too disappointed if I was a Zarko owner, but I'm I'm hoping I'm incorrect and hopefully, hopefully Herbie doesn't pass at all. I would love it. I would love it because I didn't pick up a Zarko. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, other than that, the rest of the team, obviously Trey Fuller had a bit of a bit of a shocker, but I did see some people saying he might get dropped and I was just like, what are you talking about? Like they still, they still won the game. He had a, he had a rough night, but they still won the game and he was sensational in the first two games. Like um, they weren't going to drop him unless uh, Hemiso Fido was back. So yeah, obviously he retains the spot for anyone that went Trey Fuller. You know, bit of a bit of a rough one last week, but uh, it was still the money making potential, and uh, you know he, he still got the super coach game in him. So you just gotta you gotta hold strong there. Uh, the halves, as you'd expect, forward pack, um, stock standard as well. Bench, Connolly, Lemuelu still on the on the reserves. I mean, it'd be it would be nice if Connolly dropped a fair bit of cash because he would be a he'd be a decent little smoky pickup if he's able to get the starting spot back because I mean personally I do think he is better than Ewan Aiken on the edge he's just got a bit more upside about him and he was he was great last year obviously he won't I don't think he has the dual center wing this year I mean it would be pretty shocking if he did it'd be great if he did but uh yeah Connolly just just wanted to keep an eye on if he drops a bit of cash and then comes into the side at some point starting, because I mean, he could do it this week because I, I do think he is a stronger option there. But, you know, coming back from injury, we'll see. And then the Manly Seagulls, uh, Lachlan Croker is out. I'm assuming that's with the... He had a couple of head knocks, didn't he? I think. Did he take it off a couple of times? Um, but Carl Lawton comes into the starting side... Also, Ben Jaboyevich is starting as well with Corey Waddell. Obviously, yeah, that's right. Ola Kawatu is still missing another week. I was wondering who who's the other second rower with uh, Waddell there, but no, um, Ola Kawatu is gone this week. So it'll be interesting to see what happens um, when Ola Kawatu comes back. You would expect it looks like he's just going to take Corey Waddell's spot and Waddell will go back to the bench. But, I mean, Waddell's been pretty okay in the back row, and I don't think Ben... 
Travoy, which was killing it, but it, it seemed like Ben had sort of won that spot. Um, so if anyone held Ben Trebojevic, which I was like, I, I was half tempted to do, but eh, at the time it was just, I mean, I couldn't have too many nuffs in the team. So it was, it was still the right decision. But if you held, obviously he's a really good number to have now um, coming straight back in. Dual position, still very handy. I mean, I wouldn't be looking to bring him back in just because the super coach output is a little bit a little bit limited, I would say, especially with the lack of minutes he was getting as well. But if you held him, it, it's very nice. Uh, the back line is as you would expect. Yep, nothing doing there. And then the uh, the bench. So Gordon Chen Kum Tong comes in, which uh, he's a bit of a fan favorite for for Manly fans. So be exciting to see him. I'm, I'm I gotta be shocked. I'm surprised we haven't seen him or the young fella Humphreys who was sensational in the trials. I don't know if he's been injured or whatnot, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little surprised they've been persisting with Carl Lawton as their backup dummy half for so long when you've got young guy in uh, in Gordon. And yeah, also that, that uh, I think it's, Humph what's, his, what's his name, Humphreys? I think so. He was so good. I know he's, he, I think he was more of a half, but he played dummy half in the trials and he was, he was uh, he was very very good. So surprised we haven't seen a bit more of him. But yeah, the rest of the the bench obviously Bullimore goes back to the bench. I mean, the Dolphins like this. I, I said this last week and they ended up winning. They're just so hard to pick because they can they can knock off the top teams. They can lose to the bad teams. Like they they're just up and down. You got to go with Manly. I mean, it is uh, it's at SunCorp. But Manly, I think, will enjoy playing at Suncorp, a nice fast track. And I just, I I mean, I know I probably said it the same last week with the Cowboys that they probably had a little bit too much strike. But I do think Manly should. If, the, if they're going to be any sort of competition this year, Manly, this is a game they should be winning. Then we move on to the Panthers v. the Doggies. The poor old Doggies. Um... They get to face the Panthers with a fresh Nathan Cleary, which is great to see him back in. Uh, Isaac Tunga obviously gone for that. I think it was only one match he ended up getting. So Paul Alamotti shifts just straight into his spot. So, I mean, Alamotti, come here. I mean, it works out pretty well. He comes up against his old club from last year. It's going to be a fail. It's going to be a fun watch this one for sure. Because, I mean, it's, it's a lot of back and forth, mainly from, you know, Penrith players now playing for the Doggies. But, you know, you got you got one up there with Paul Alamotti taking on his old club. So it should be it should be a fun watch, I gotta be honest. It should be it should be an interesting game. I don't know if there'll be a bit of uh a bit of argy bargy in this one potentially with some with some friends, but uh should be it should be good fun regardless. Uh, the rest of the back line, as you expect, obviously Cleary coming in. And then the forward pack, uh, full strength bench. Jack Cole is still the 14. Uh, Lindsay Smith. Liam Henry comes back into the side. And Maverick Guy uh, keeps his spot. So who's dropped? So Eisenhuth is out. And who, who else is out? Who, who else is on the bench? I, ca I can't remember. Um, but yeah, it's good to see Liam Henry back. I mean, I've obviously, he's obviously still in my team. I'm, I'm not going to be playing him, but if he can, if he can just jag some more minutes, if he can get like, I, yeah, I'm not expecting much more than like thirties with, with a full strength Panthers team, but you know, you never know if, uh, if Penrith are sort of looking good in games, then I wouldn't be shocked to see. Fisher Harris and Leota get a bit of a spell, and guys like Lindsay Smith and Liam Henry get extra minutes. So that's, I mean, that's sort of the benefit of Henry is just that you never really expect Fisher Harris and Leota to play like massive minutes anymore, uh, especially Leota. Uh, Fisher Harris can do it at times, but I, I don't think they're gonna. They're just not going to need him for that at the moment. And then the dogs, I think they are unchanged. Uh, Jacob Kiraz, good to see him. I know, I didn't notice during the game, but apparently he had, or he suffered like a bit of a knee complaint. I don't know the exact uh, verbiage they use, but I couldn't believe it when I fucking saw it. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> oh no. But he's been named, which is good. I think like 
they, they said it was more like a pain thing it wasn't like uh anything serious which was which is good but it's also like annoying because he's sort of done this a lot kira it's like he'll look absolutely unstoppable and then he'll pick up like a little niggle and it just goes downwards pretty quickly so uh i mean it's a tough obviously i picked up kira's last week not you know well and truly knowing that they're taking on Penrith this week, but then it's a really good run coming up for the dogs. So this game, it's a you know, it's a bit of a washout. Like you would still expect him to base well. Um, it might be a little down because you probably wouldn't expect as many tackle busts and offloads against Penrith, but hopefully he can just if he can just jag an attacking stat in this game, it would be it would be nice. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know how this game is going to go, really. I, I'm expecting sort of a... I, I mean, I, if I'm being honest, I'm expecting Penrith to put a score on, but the Dogs have been really good defensively, so I, I wouldn't be shocked if it's a low-scoring counter uh, across the board. Uh, obviously, Crichton, the captain. Uh, Harv, still Hutchison, Burden, forward pack, Josh Curran. Apparently, he's starting, but I'm sure he'll shift back to the bench like he always does. I don't know why the coaches do this. It fucking, it's just, oh, it's just so annoying. Like, it doesn't matter, but it's just like, why? Like, just just name the team that's going to run out. Like, you're not tricking the opposition, for Christ's sake. Uh, the back line, or the back row, kick out seven, Kurt Mann. Haywood keeps the 14, Sam Hughes, Morin, and Preston, who I don't think, I don't think Preston played any minutes last week, so... I'm not going to lie, it would have been good if he came on and played like five or ten minutes and dropped a bunch of cash because, oh, that would have been lovely. Hopefully he, yeah, I mean, hopefully this week he plays a few. I'm expecting him to probably play a decent amount against Penrith, but it would be great if he played like another couple of weeks of reduced minutes and you could pick Preston up for fairly cheap. I think uh, he could also... Like Connolly, Preston could be a little bit of a watch. I don't know what his price is, but um, yeah, I'll have, a, I'll have a look at him. I know he started expensive because obviously he had a great year um, last year, but yeah, keep keep an eye on. Obviously, I'm I'm tipping the bull uh, the Panthers, <laughs> the Bulldogs, but tipping the Panthers in that one. They they should get up really. Then we have the Bronx for the Eels. So a couple of big injuries for both sides still. Um, Blaze Talangi, my boy, is at fullback, which is, oh, that is, that is very, very nice. Um, I mean, it's such a perfect position to have because he's sort of on the cusp. He's like, what's he like, 280k. He's got a break even of about 40 odd just because he had a couple of low scores. But if he can just get a decent little run at fullback and just have a couple of good games, he could, he could make some really good cash. And also he could be a good play. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'll have a look at our players this week. I'm not sure what I'm leaning yet. I mean, honestly, I'm I'm sort of leaning playing him against the Broncos. I just think without Reynolds, the kicking game's not going to be as good. Um, you know, they're not full strength, so I'm I'm sort of I'm sort of on the Blaze uh, bandwagon potentially this week. But you know, because he, he's shown he's got a super coach game, and the good thing is. Like, obviously, there is defensive work with fullbacks, but he's not going to be in the front line defending, which he, you know, uh, for a young kid, it's not surprising, but he was a little bit out of his depth, I would say, in the front line defending. Um, so, be sort of like less missed tackles, I guess, uh, defending there, and he can just focus on attack. Again, I know there's plenty of, plenty of defensive work at fullback, but hopefully... Uh, you know, it'll it'll be less uh, less just traffic running at him, so to speak. Uh, then we have, I mean, the rest of the back line, as you'd expect. I think uh, it's unchanged. I think was Russell in the at centre. I don't know. Was he? Was Morgan, Morgan Harper there last week? I can't even remember, but uh, that's fine. Ethan Sanders, I thought he looked pretty good last week. Nothing outstanding, but he, he did his job. He actually, you know what? Actually, he looked pretty good to start the game. Well, I would dare say he looked very good to start the game. I thought when it went further into it, I, I, a few little things defensively again. Um, 
he had a few mistakes in him, but he definitely started pretty well. So I think I, I think as Haas pairing goes, it it felt the best for someone like a Dylan Brown to have a Sanders there who seems more natural as more I know he's playing five eight, but more like a halfback role. So sort potentially good signs for Dylan Brown. Uh, then we have the forward pack, as you would expect. Again, fucking Polo is starting, but we'll see about that. Sean Lane. Ryan Madison is still starting. Hopgood, Cartwright. Uh... Okay, I'm back. I, I just caught it. I was like, oh man, I was so close to sneezing straight into the mic, but uh, I paused it just just in the nick of time. So what was I, what was I talking about? Yeah, so Ryan Madison is still starting. Bryce Carwright is on the bench. Uh, Makata, Offengawi, and Kelma Tuolangi. So, I don't know. I don't know what to think about that. The forward pack. There could be two late changes. I mean, obviously, we know Offengawi is going to start for Polo. It fucking just happens. But maybe Carwright starts for Madison. I actually thought Madison played his best footy on the edge playing big minutes i i honestly i, I don't know like i i think he can't play through the middle but arthur's just giving him no minutes through the middle and i still think he's a he's a pretty good forward for them i i i don't know i just i i think their balance the, the the balance of their team is just all out of whack you know they're just front loaded way too much with forwards who can play really big minutes and can be really effective but there's too many fucking mouths to feed that's their problem so you're just not getting any sort of decency and i i like i i held sean lane but i'm a little worried like he, he's been pretty poor so potentially i i don't know if madison has another good week or maybe cartwright comes on and spells sean lane so ah uh, there is a temptation i could still sell lane this week i'm i'm more tempted to hold him just because i don't know unless i'm obviously unless i'm going to a, a genuine gun there's not that many back rollers i'm that keen on anyway so i don't know if he just plods along and is good cover the, for the buys. I, I'm leaning towards that, but I'm definitely not sold on it just because, again, like, he's been in bad form. Like, he just has. So I wouldn't be shocked if he if he starts uh, losing some minutes when uh, when Cartwright is fully fit and, and Madison, if he looks good on the edge again, you never know. Uh, then we have the Bronx, obviously, with Reynolds and Jesse Arthurs being out. So Corey Oates comes straight in. Good to see Cobo still there. Reese Walsh, obviously named Ezra Mam and Joshua Rogers, the young guy. Um, I'm happy to see it. I, I I saw that. Yeah, Jock Madden wasn't uh, ready to go after his injury a couple of weeks ago. I actually like Josh Rogers. I think I think he's a really solid player. Big body, good defensive, defensively, uh, good kicking game. So I'm happy to see him there, and I think it. Honestly, I'm, I'd, I'd probably rather him than, than Madden. Even though Madden's been good, I, ca I can't complain with Madden. I think they're actually, the games he's played, they're actually like, they've won, I think, three to one, I think it is. But uh, I do like Josh Rogers. I think I think he's a pretty good player. And then the forward pack, obviously, unchanged. And then the bench. <sighs> so, Smoothie... Willis and Hetherington and Gazeski is straight into the team. What is this? <laughs> oh God! I mean, as so, I don't, I don't, I don't particularly like Gazeski, but it's not for for the way this Broncos team is. It actually isn't the worst because at least he provides he he provides cover in a couple of positions. He can play through the middle. He can play on an edge, and you'd probably. He can play in the centers at, at a pinch as well. I mean, maybe him or Pia Cora or Ricky. I mean, you've got a couple of guys there, but I, I don't know. At least, at least he provides something as a bit of cover. I still, yeah, I don't know. I still think there's better options there, but I don't know. He provides a little bit of versatility. This one's, a, I mean, I, 
I got to tip the Bronx. I mean, it's funny because on the video, obviously, I tipped the Bronx last week. In my actual tipping comps, I picked the I picked the Roosters. I went with my uh, my head instead of my heart in that one. I wasn't expecting the absolute fucking disarray the Broncos went through in that game. Um, but I I don't know. I just I just had a feeling the Roosters were gonna turn up in that in in that match. But uh, in this one. I think it's going to be a tough one for the Bronx again. But, I mean, without Gutherson, without Moses still, I know the Bronx are missing Reynolds, but I, I think they, they should win this game. They should. And if they don't, it'll be a disappointing loss for sure. So, we'll see. The Eels off a bye as well. Bit of a freshen up, but surely the Bronx will be will be up out for vengeance after after last week's poor sort of end to the end to the contest that's for sure so i'll tip the bronx in that one uh moving on moving on we have the knights the the tigers i i, I did see the tigers are in a little bit of disarray <laughs> um i do see yeah aiden caesar is out and latu finu also i think with a hemi injury so that limits their halves. Uh, the rest of the back line, as it expects, Lockie Galvin and Jaden Sullivan comes in. I mean, it's it's Andy having Sullivan there because I mean I think a lot of people are hoping Ladu Finu was going to get the spot, I, even if Finu was fit. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I we don't know what Benji would have done. I mean, Sullivan was the the front runner to start the season, but obviously not great form. Lady Finu is the is the future, so it would have been interesting to see if they if they selected the two young guns in this game. It's it's unfortunate we don't get the potential, but Sullivan as your I guess fourth backup option, it could be worse. It, I, I, all I'm saying is it could be worse. Um, yeah. What what else what else is there to say on that one? Happy Coruscant is named again. Um, I mean, again, I, if 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 you got Happy in your team, just just keep an eye on late mail because he was late, he was named last week, but then I I late out with that back injury. So we'll see. I I think he probably will play this week just because they they're gonna need him for some experience out there. Um. The rest of Ford Pack. Oh, they've actually had a little switch here. So Johnny Bateman's gone back to the back row, and Zaya Papali'i has gone to lock. Which, I, honestly, I I think that's probably good for Papali'i. I mean, I I don't know about fucking Bateman. Bateman just does what he does, and like it, he's one of these guys. I sort of think of him like a bit of a Josh Hodgson. I know they're different positions. They're both Englishmen, but they. They obviously can do some freakish things, and when they do something great, it looks amazing, right? Bateman can do a little grubber for himself, or he can crab across field and get a great pass away at times, but for the majority of it, it's just fucking... Like, they overplay their hand, they get in other players' way all the time, and... I don't know what his position is nowadays. Like, I just, uh, I don't know. Probably on the edge. I think at lock, he was getting too much of the football, <laughs> which is just, it's not beneficial. Um, I also think Isaiah Papali has been fucking atrocious on the edge lately. He's just not putting his hand up for any work at all, which is disappointing as a... Uh, I mean, it's not disappointing for me because I'm not a Tigers fan, but if you were a Tigers fan, you'd be looking at this guy who is like a very strong ball runner and just fucking asking him, why are you not taking any tough carries? Like, help out your fucking teammates. But now playing at lock, like he's going to have to run the ball. And that's what you want him to do. Just run the ball hard and straight, get a quick play the ball. That's all he. That's all he needs to do. So we'll see if it actually really impacts too much. But I, th I actually, I, I don't mind the switch. It's also good for Finu because it does sort of indicate that he is like locked into this edge spot because they, they switched now Bateman and Papali, but Finu has retained his spot. So good stuff there. Uh, Jake Simkin was actually, I thought he was pretty good uh, covering for Appy last week. So. No issue there if Happy can't get through the whole game, obviously. And then the rest of the bench. Uh, the Knights. Um, Armstrong obviously keeps his spot at fullback. A very popular cheapie this week that... Yeah, I, th I mean, it's going to be hard to pass up, that's for sure. Uh, Greg Maju, Gagai, Best Twala. Rest of backline standard. Um, 
Jaden Braley. I mean, a few people were blowing up that he only played 50 minutes last week. I don't know. I mean, it, it, it'll be an it'll be a bit of an issue if he continues that, but I think it was just a bit of a rest for him. He played like 70, 80, and 80 minutes on the trot, so I wasn't shocked to see in like wet conditions him get a spell. Uh, yeah, I just... But I think uh, I think going forward, he'll still play decent minutes because I, I also think Crossland is far better coming on as a like a, a, a middle forward, a running middle forward role. Like that's, uh, you know, pretty much like a Kurt Mann. They, <coughs> excuse me, pretty much like a Kurt Mann they've had uh, for, for a couple of years there. I think that's very suited for their attack and also their team. Big one here, Tyson Frizzell comes in, which is... Unfortunate for Dylan Lucas, he drops back to the bench. I gotta, I, I gotta be honest. I'm, I'm, I'm a little surprised they haven't gone with Frizzell at lock and kept Dylan Lucas on the edge. I mean, I know Frizzell's been a rep level back rower for his whole career, and he's still been very good the last couple of seasons. But I don't know. I, th- I think Dylan Lucas has has earned the spot, and I think Tyson Frizzell later in his career and also for the team, I think it would just suit them having that that quick feet through the middle of Frizzell. But I don't know. They've gone back to the back to the basics, which I mean it's worked for them. So you can't complain. And obviously Dylan Lucas is uh, he's good off the bench. He provides good cover in the outside backs and also he can play he can play on the edge. So it is what it is. Um this is a tough game to pick. Um well, not really. Actually, I was gonna. I was, gonna, I, I was tempted to say the Tigers, but yeah, without without Aiden Caesar in the team and that kicking game, I do think they'll struggle. I mean, just not having a good kicking game. I mean, Galvin's solid enough, but it, Caesar's one of the better kickers in the comp. So, like like Fogarty for the Raiders, I think it's going to be a big struggle, sort of just just dominating field position, and that just it just goes a long way. And I think the Knights like. They're being good enough. Like I, I, I know they had a good win last week, but uh, I think this is a, this is a big game for them. Like I think uh, it's a it's a game they probably should on paper win comfortably. I don't think they will, but it's a game for them to sort of step up. A couple of their young guys, Armstrong, um, some of their you know more experienced halves to sort of step up as well so um yeah you gotta you gotta tip the knights in this one i know it's i know it's going with the the basic going with the crowd for that one but yeah we gotta we gotta do it uh dragons rabbitos so some big changes for the for the rabbits here um looking at the dragons first there's only one real change Tui Pilotto goes out Jack Bird is back no Moses Suley is back in from that concussion and Zach Lomax goes back to the wing which is good for owners uh the forward pack is as you would expect and everything else is unchanged nothing too much else doing there the rabbits <laughs> so well, Trail Mitchell is back. Um, it's oh, it's so annoying that we're not going to see what would have happened with fuck Tung Tungo, you absolute dog, uh, taking Gray out. So we're not going to get to see if the young star would have stayed at fullback and Mitchell would have gone to the centers. So they've been forced to. I mean, they've just been given the opportunity to put Mitchell straight back to fullback, but. You know, I, th- I think he'll come out fired up. <laughs> I think he'll, I think Mitchell will have a couple of banging games uh, coming up for sure. So I'm going to be honest, I am very tempted to potentially trade him in for one Ryan Pappenhausen. We'll talk more about that, obviously, in the preview. But yeah, Mitchell's back. Germat Shibazaki is in. He has come from the clouds, uh, picked up from... Uh, one of the Q Cup sides, and uh, you stri- it's so funny because I mean, obviously that uh, who was it? Braden Burns was released to go. Who did he go to? The Cowboys, I think the Cowboys, and then they picked up Shibazaki, which is so weird. Like, why? I, I don't know. Obviously, there's more to it than that. Like, uh, I sure uh, I'm sure Braden Burns was on more money. Um. But it's just very strange how it works. So now Shibazaki is straight in on the wing, obviously with Isaiah Tass now out as well. There's a lot. 
said a lot. Jack White and Cheekham are still the centers. Uh, Thompson is on the wing, so no Jacob Gagai still. It seemed like I did see on Twitter that apparently Gagai... It seemed like Gagai and Johns, Johnson, which is annoying, are both like pretty close to returning. So, oh, Gagai is going to be right, and then all of a sudden there won't be a wing spot for him. It'll it'll be an absolute disaster, but we'll see. I can just I can hope that Gagai comes in when he's fit. Hopefully he's back next week. We'll see. Uh, doesn't it's, it doesn't matter too much, but it is what it is. Uh, Cody Walker and the young Dion Taupa. Telpa, I don't even know if he's young. Honestly, I, I, I don't, uh, I don't recognise the name. But uh, be interesting to see how he goes. Obviously, replacing Dean Hawkins, who I mean, honestly, Dean Hawkins has been trash. So, yeah, give someone else a go. Like honestly, Dean Hawkins has been just, he's just been a passenger. Like I, I haven't, I barely noticed him in any games. I mean, f- granted, last week he actually started the game pretty well. So I'm being a little harsh, but. Other than the the start of last week, I just haven't even noticed Dean Hawkins. So I think it's, uh, you know, the injury is no good, but I'm excited to see someone someone new, someone to freshen up this Rabbitohs team potentially. Uh, the forward pack, Moale starts, Kepi, Cook, Kalamatangi, Arrow. And so Arrow's in the, uh, in the back row. I mean, he was in all sorts last week, like three or four times. He was clutching his shoulder, his neck, like... <coughs> yeah, he was cl- he was clutching everything last week. I mean, Arrow just he just he's in the wars every week nowadays. Like, I miss the old days of Jai Arrow at the times playing like 60, 70 minutes and being an absolute monster. But you know, his body his body's just struggling. His body is struggling, but he's. He's back on the edge. We'll see how he goes. Saliva so Hevili is starting lock. So Peter Mamazoulis, Talis Duncan on the bench, Matt French and Thomas Burgess. So I think a lot of people are hoping Talis Duncan would get the starting lock spot. It'll be, I mean, it'll be a interesting watch this week to see the minutes. Because, I mean, Duncan, I don't know what he's... Pro- I, I know he started around 350. He's probably lost money because he's only played a... F- I feel like he only played a few minutes for the first couple of games. So, yeah, it'll be a it'll be a good watch this week to see what's going to happen because I mean, he he looked so good last year. I, I I like a lot of people, it's just been baffling that he hasn't been in the team with all the injuries. Um and obviously Murray now missing like a good chunk now. Uh there's a spot, there's definitely a spot and Tellus Duncan could be a nice little downgrade option in the back row to, to free up a bit of cash and also get a potential decent score if he gets any good minutes. So we'll see. Uh, this is a really tough game to tip. <laughs> I uh, honestly, I don't know. This one is tough. I know the amount of outs of the Rabbids, but I just honestly, with Mitchell being back, I think he's going to... I think he's going to be an absolute monster this game and and for the next couple of games. I just, I can just feel it. I can just feel, there is no way Mitchell is going to come back and have a shocker. I just can't see it. So I'm going to tip the Rabbits. I'm going to tip the Rabbits. I'm going to tip Mitchell to have an absolute stormer and uh, the Dragons to just, you know, they, they can have their up and down games. And I think this one where you'd probably ex- I don't know, expect them to win or they should win this one. I think they're going to they're gonna have a an off night. So we'll tip the rabbits in this one. We'll tip the, we'll tip the bunnies. <laughs> we'll <see. laughs> oh, who knows? That, that, is, that is a tough game. Uh, then we have the Storm be the Sharky. So a little grand final rematch here of a few years ago. Um, first and second on the ladder too. Would you look at that? So unfortunately... Oh, I see someone, but Ryan Pappenhausen is gone. It, I mean, all things considered, it doesn't seem like it's that... Like, it's bad. Like, it's a small fracture in the same leg, but it's not like it's season-ending injury. But obviously, with, with his injury pass, like, there could be complications. We never know. So hopefully, he can come back strong, fit, 
He was looking strong and fit this year. It's just, it's one of those shockers, but it is what it is. Uh, Jerome Hughes also out. Uh, like someone commented, I, I completely forgot that, yeah, he picked up like a calf injury uh, in the last game, but he sort of, he, he just toughed it out. But it, yeah, it seemed like he would probably succumb to that this week. Um, Sua Fialongo has been named a fullback. <clears throat> Obviously, he also struggled with a knee uh, complaint last game. But he has been named, so that makes it very interesting. I I don't know. Is he going to make money this week? I'm not too sure. I th- No, he's, I think he's only played the one game last week, right? <clears throat> I think he only played the trials before that. So you can you can probably wait a week on Fire Longo, but oh, that's exciting. I mean, you hate to see Papenhausen out, but this kid, Fire Longo... <sighs> Oh, he's good. He's good. And uh, I'm very excited to see him go. And uh, he could be a very nice uh, downgrade option because I think he's dual center wing fullback. I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't think he's just fullback. I'm pretty sure he's center wing as well. Uh, the rest of the back line. Um, so Grant Anderson comes onto the wing. And that's right. Yeah, because uh, obviously... Xavier Coates is still out. So, yeah, a couple of, a couple of big losses for the Storm here. Cam Munster, Tyron Wishart starts at seven. Uh, the forward pack, as you would expect. Obviously, Hughes being out is, like, really bad for Eli Katoa. He'll still get through his work, but it just... I mean, Hughes just gives so much space for him. Tyron Wishart is a very serviceable replacement, but he's no, he's no uh, Jerome Hughes. So, Eli Katoa owners like myself is going to be probably a little bit of a bit of a down couple of weeks i would expect um the rest of forward pack as you'd expect as well big uh, a big bench there and then the sharkies uh i think they're pretty much full strength toby rudolph is out so i mean big tommy hazelton has been absolutely on fire he's been carrying this forward pack for the sharks i mean they've all been good but he's been an absolute monster Britton nicara wilton mckinnis Usual su- uh, suspects. And then, uh, okay, yeah, so Royce Hunt does finally come back in for Rudolph. I mean, they've got a bunch of big men to choose from when uh, when fully fit, that is for sure. So, but yeah, a uh, should be another big contest here. I'm. This is another tough game. I. <sighs> it makes it more tricky because it's at Amy Park, but without Hughes, without Papenhausen... Without Xavier Coates, like, I mean, again, this is a game that you can just see the Storm getting up for and winning for sure. But surely the Sharks, like, they they know that they get criticized a lot for not beating the top teams. Like, if they, they've they've got to win this game, right? I'm going to go with the Sharks. I just... Yeah, I just, I just Tyron Wishart, Grant Anderson. It, it just, it's a weaker team. The Sharks should win. The Sharks should win. Um, but it's definitely not set in stone, that one. That, that's, uh, that is definitely a danger game for the Sharks, and they, they will know it. Then we have the Roosters v. the Warriors. So we have got roosters uh, uh, they're going to be full strength i think this week um back line so yeah daniel tupo is back suwali in the centers uh ford pack hargraves is back starting um crying butcher radley hudson white len Yu comes back in obviously and terrell may the 17 so the big the big talking point here is how is terrell may going to go with the minutes and I do not know. <laughs> it just... Who knows? Who knows, bro? Um, yeah. It, it, it could be anything. It could be anything. You'd probably expect after playing good minutes last week that he'll probably revert back to fewer. But... It's it's anyone's guess. It's honestly anyone's guess what's going to happen. Um, I'm still, like, I'm obviously just going to hold tail, mate, at this point. It's just a matter of, like, do you play him this week? I And that's that's the question. But 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I still think... Uh, that's the thing. If you traded that Terrell May last week, obviously it's a bit of a kick in the guts that he scored two tries, but it's still a good play. Like, I, I he is still a bit of a nightmare with this... Uh, with his bench rotation, I still I don't think Lenu coming in like I know people have said that Lenu coming in is gonna take away his minutes even more. I don't think so because Spencer he's never been a big minute forward anyway. So why why would he just take way more minutes now, especially after being suspended for bloody eight weeks? I I think that'd be a little strange, but. We'll see. It'll be a good little week to see how the rotation potentially will look. But again, it could change next week for all we know. So, yeah, who knows? Who knows with the the Roosters rotations? And then the Warriors. So, they are unchanged in the back line. Tamara Martin's still there, even though his form's been pretty down. Fenor Blake, Egan, Buntia, Foa starts. Jackson Ford, Barnett moves into the back row for Capel, who's out. So that's that's a decent change. I actually, I, I mean, Barnett, I think, is very underrated. I think he's really, really solid. He's been great at prop, but he used to be an absolute gun in the back row. So I think, um, yeah, he can play anywhere. I think he's a... I think he's a very, very good forward, Barnett, and I think he'll do a great job in the back row this week. Tohu Harris, obviously, at lock, and then you got Dylan Walker, Ale, Jazz Tavanga, and Pompey on the bench. It's a, it's a strange bench, it's got to be said. I don't think it provides... Uh, probably not as exciting as the Roosters, um, but it's an interesting bench, that's for sure. Uh, it's definitely... I mean, again, I... Uh, I'm going to... Fuck, you got to be... I'm still very tempted to pick up for Noor Blake this week. I know he's going to be sky-high price, but I mean, just look at the bench. You got Walker and Pompey. I mean, Fenor Blake's going to play fucking massive minutes still. So, uh, but yeah, I probably won't. I probably won't. I'll hold off for a few weeks still before I, I go to Fenor Blake. Probably just go Sam Hughes up to him at some point, but we'll, we'll talk more about that later. Uh, you got to tip the Roosters in this one. It's it's a game that, again, it's a danger game against the Warriors, but the Roosters, it's a game they should be winning. Then we have the Queensland derby here, Titans v. the Cowboys. Tanner Boyd, obviously, unfortunately, out. I mean, he was actually... He was actually starting to hit a bit of form, so it's, it's disappointing that he has uh, picked up an injury. Brimson's still... <coughs> <coughs> Oh, excuse me. I was, uh, again, I would have I would have paused it, but man, tickle in my throat. Thankfully, I used to do these videos live. Um, I would be absolutely struggling if I was doing these live at the moment because, my God, every like few minutes, like just the throat, it's tickling. You gotta, you gotta cough it out. But uh, yeah, br- what, were we, what were we talking about? Brimson, a fullback. Uh, rest of the back line unchanged. Chris Randall goes to six for Boyd. I, I don't mind it. I mean, he's just going to be a fairly defensive, strong 5'8", so that's fine. He's, he's got an okay king game on him, so I think it works okay. Kieran Foran will control the ship. Forward pack, as you would expect, Semi Verils is starting for Fida, Fermore, Liu, uh, Keanu Kinney is, uh, is in the 14, which is an interesting one. Okay, so they might... Aaron Clark, Carson, Pahulu. So they might end up... They could do a late switch for sure. Yeah. The, honestly, the way this is looking, I, I'm sort of expecting Kinney to start a fullback, Brimson to go to six, and Randall to go to the bench. Um, or potentially, he might just start like this take the sting out of the game and then make that switch like later, maybe midway through the first half or even the second half, bring Kinney on with a bit of a tiring defensive line, put Brimson at the halves and, and Randall maybe spell barrels at hooker. You could see that as well. Actually, you know what? I don't mind that. I actually think that's a, that could be a pretty astute little uh, ploy if used correctly because Kinney around some tired defenders would be an absolute nightmare. I mean, Brimson as well, but having a couple of nippy guys like that could cause the Cowboys some some trouble. And then on the Cowboys' side, um, so yeah, you see Braden Burns. Also, Harrison Edwards was a was a early pickup as well from the from the Doggies. Um, but the back line, Viliami Valia, 
is starting. A, yeah, he played. He played there last week. Yeah, he lo- he looked pretty good, honestly, as well. Uh, a few little defensive misses, but um, he looks strong. He looks strong, so he'll be better for the run. Uh, Didn Townsend has been named. Obviously, uh, Clifford was in for him last week with that injury, so. I don't know if that's good or bad for the Cowboys. I don't know. I sort of like Clifford. He obviously didn't have a fantastic game last week, but I, I think there's 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 definitely some there's definitely something about Clifford I, I do like. So I'm just glad to see him back in the NRL, honestly. Uh and then the forward pack, we got McLean, Robson, Neem starting. Fiddy Fuyaki is still starting with Nanai and Cotter, so Heel and Lukey still coming off the bench. McKaylee. McIntyre and Tamalolo. It's still a far stronger st- stronger bench. And then, yeah, you've got uh, yeah, Brayden Burns in the extended and Harrison Edwards. So this one, fuck, I don't... <laughs> I got to go with the Cowboys. Fuck, I mean, the Cowboys did me dirty last week against their other Queensland rivals, the the Finns. But I don't know. This week, sure, surely, surely. They're playing at Seabus Super Stadium. Like, it's another fast track. <sighs> I'm going to go with the Kiaras. Like, sure, they, surely they got a bit too much. Like, they have to start putting it together. They've been very up and down all season, but I'm expecting a Cowboys bounce back. I don't know. The Titans have been up for the last few weeks, but I think the Cowboys will have a little bit too much in this one for the Titans. But uh, they've been pretty good. They've been pretty good, the Titans. They've been a bit unlucky as well last the last few weeks. So, should be another exciting watch regardless should be some points in this one so that's that's the team list that's the tips hopefully guys enjoyed i finally got through it it's been a it's been a slog with the throat it's been it's been a struggle but hopefully guys are enjoying the the content make sure to like and comment and i'll see you guys in the next one